Welcome to another edition of Grace Under Pressure, where my guest today is Howard H. Prager. I'll tell you all about Howard in just a moment. Grace Under Pressure, as those of you who have watched the show before, know that it's, we deal with the, um, the soft stuff, the stuff that's too often dismissed, the caring, the commitment we exert toward others. And when you do it as a leader, as you will discover that uh, Howard is, you do it to bring people together with lots of positive energy and kindness. Welcome, Howard Prager. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show today. So. John, it feels like it's been so long in coming. I'm delighted to be here with you today. Well, it's a pleasure. Uh, folks, I want to tell you all about Howard. I know him personally. Um, we are members of MG100 um, coaches. And uh, my little thing about Howard is if you have a dictionary, go to it right now. Look up the word kindness. And there's a picture of Howard right there. He's the, one of the most kind and compassionate people I know. And I'm honored that he's on the show today. Uh, Howard, I want to have a, uh, tell people about you. You're the president of Advanced Learning Group. You're an author, speaker, executive coach, and consultant and coach. And your newest book, which we're going to talk about today, is Make Someone's Day. So oh, hey, you got it. I got it. Okay, good. Um, you um, have won a lot of awards. You work uh, closely with the Association of Talent Development, uh, European Foundation for Management Development, whole bunches of stuff. And um, you are a kind and giving person. And you're also a member of the Association for Talent Development. I guess that's ATD and a member of the Authors Guild. So way cool. Howard, welcome to the show. Oh. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. Glad to share with your listeners all sorts of information and stories on how they can start becoming that memorable leader by making someone's day. Great. You know, so Howard, make someone's day. We hear it all the time. But how did you come up with this particular idea and how did you want to frame this? So. Sure, that's great. So it really happened by, by happenstance which is truly one of the ways Make Someone's Day happens, John. Um, I, I teach people how to do it and how to plan for it, to make it more planful. But to be honest with you, sometimes it just happens. And that's how I first experienced it. Uh, my first time I really was consciously experiencing it. I was uh, taking the train downtown. And, and you live in Chicago, in the Chicago area. Yep. So, so when, when we're in the burbs commuting down, we're there early. So it was 6.20, 6.30 a.m. train. And I'm at the station and a woman walks up to me with a clipboard, young woman, who said, would you mind signing this petition? I said, what's it for? She said, I want to get somebody on the ballot for election. I said, great, let me sign. And who, can you tell me who it is as I'm signing it? And I said, oh, I've heard of them. That's even better. So I said, here's the clipboard back. Thank you. And she looked at me with the biggest eyes I've ever seen and said, you made my day. <laughs> that was it. I signed the petition. That's how simple it can be to make someone's day. We'll talk about, and I've got examples in the book of all sorts of ways, more complex, less complex, but it could be as simple as signing that petition that made her day, and that made me think about the concept the whole train ride down and really the whole day, and it elevated my mood and day. Well, I think one of the gifts of this book is that it's very accessible, um, and it's simple in its proposition, but the way you flesh it out, you give it a richness as well as a compelling uh, uh, case to let's put it into action. So Howard, who is this book intended for? Um, all of us, I would think, but yes, yeah. want specific, uh, any well, audience and specifically. So. Thanks, John. So, so my subtitle is Becoming a Memorable Leader in Work and Life. And if I, if I was in front of a class right now, in front of an organization, I'd have people raise their hands and say, how many of you have had a bad boss? <laughs> and nearly everyone's hand goes up. And I've taught leadership development for over 40 years. I've won awards in this. I know people who do outstanding work, including you in the field. <laughs> Yet why are, do we still have bad bosses out there? I believe that make someone's day will make bad bosses better bosses and it'll make 
good bosses, great bosses. Okay. So it's for certainly for those managers and leaders, but it's also, as you say, for all of us who really want to have an impact on others in our lives. Okay. I love that story about you know, being in front of an audience and uh, asking who's had a bad boss. I've done the same kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, whatever. So, okay. So let's delve into this. So how can a bad boss who reads this become a better boss? What What's the secret or what's the plan, Howard? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so here's here's the special sauce on, on top of the burger, right? Spoken from a Chicagoan home of Ray Kroc and the exactly. founded McDonald's, uh, exactly. with that franchise organization. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so true. So, the secret sauce is this: if you just pay attention to those around you and try to make a difference in what they're doing. And so I created something really simple. It's called the VIP model. Because John, who doesn't like feeling like a VIP, right? Yeah, And it's yeah, absolutely. I love that, that's right. So, okay, so well, let me stop you before you go into this because you said something, you have to pay attention, which is obvious, but how often do we forget to pay attention, Howard? So. Way too often, you know, uh, as bosses today, as workers today, we are so focused on getting the job done. If we're working remotely, we're trying to manage the things in our household as well as managing work. And so we're not taking maybe extra time that we would at the water cooler before or after meetings, really to have those side conversations. So right. really, we need to think more about it now when people are more working remotely than perhaps we even do in person. Okay, well, let's delve into the how, which is please explore this VIP model. So. Sure, and I'll give, and then we can share some stories about yeah. it in use. So the V stands for view and observe. And by the way, there's a chapter in the book, I'm doing this for introverts. So if you happen to be more introverted and maybe you don't wanna have that face-to-face -face or direct contact, this book is for you, too, because you can also make someone stay. So view and observe what's going on around you. If it's someone who works for you, you're seeing them in many situations. So it's even easier for you to know when maybe something's not amiss, something's not right. Then you want to identify and consider what options do you want to have. So view and observe. Then identify and consider options. Notice that one, each of these is like reflective. So the view is active, the, or observe is active, and, and view, and then reflect. Um, identify and then reflect and consider. And finally, plan, which is more reflective, and then act, do it. That's the P. Okay. So you want to see what's going on. You want to figure out what does that, might that person need. And then you want you want to act on it. It could be as simple as giving them a smile, or maybe a. a, a, a well, it's almost we'll say a pat on the head, but you don't give them a pat on the head. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to give them a you know the, a positive affirmation, right? And find out how can you help them because the bottom line is you want to get the job done too. And if you can help your people be successful, not only will it make your job easier, it'll make their job better. And you'll have more people who want to stay and retain a workforce at a time when I'm hearing numbers of anywhere from 40 to 80% of people are looking for a new job right now. That's yeah. unheard of, right? Right. And so uh, let me give you the, let me be the cynic here for a second, Howard. Uh, I love your concept. You know that I, I'm um, lived with you as you put this together. Yeah. So but I'm a boss. I'm a busy boss. And I go, yeah, I like that. But, you know, I don't have time. So what would you say to a boss who says that, Howard? Um, it, that a it would take more time if they don't have their heart in it. It'll take more time if they don't do it right. And they'll take more time if they leave because they're not happy. So um, <laughs> as, as the saying goes, you can pay me now or pay me later. And believe okay. me, if you're going to pay me later, it's going to cost a whole lot more 
than it is spending a little time right now. You know, that's such a commonsensical thing, as our colleague Martin uh, Lindstrom in his book, Ministry of Common Sense, talks about, is so often we just, the stuff is staring us in the face. And I'm glad the way you quantified this and you, uh, about, it, it's not the ROI thing, but it's good to remind people that, okay, you have good employees, you want them to walk out the door, how much is that gonna cost you? So I, I like how you link that. So. Thank you. Thank you. So let me Thank give you. a couple examples, John, if you don't mind. Please um, do. Jump in. Yeah. So, so I've, I've, I've got several here. Um, let me start with one, with a group of people that have been really um, maligned as of late, the last several years, and that's journalists, people who really just want to report what's going on. They want to report the news as factually as possible. They don't want to take sides. They want to be neutral. Um, we know that there are the journalists on each side of the spectrum. But the mainstay of journalists really are in that middle area wanting mm -hmm. to just report what's going on. And um, at the Washington Post, um, they were beaten up. And then all of a sudden, um, in, in several years ago, Letters and cards started pouring in to the managing editor. And he realized, his name was Marty Barron, and he realized these letters aren't for me. They're for everyone out here in the newsroom who's working. And so he started posting them out so that they would face, uh, post them on the wall of his office facing out so that people could see them. Mm -hmm. and I can't tell you how many people walked by that wall of gratitude, wall of appreciation, when they were feeling down, confused, um, just needing to be lifted up. And those notes and, and comments, and when they uh, went, um, like, like all of us did when uh, beginning of the pandemic and everyone's working virtually, everyone like took pictures of the notes that meant the most to them so that they could just refer back to them from home and be able right. to see, hey, you know, that's good. You know, that's a wonderful, it's a wonderful idea. And um, uh, other organizations have done similar things. And I think we've seen that. And, you know, it's the kind, hey, we appreciate you, but it's not simply management. It's our customers. And in this instance, the readers of the Washington Post, but it could be anything. And we all, and I'm glad you brings this up because we all need this kind of validation. We all need a pick me up, a, a pat on the back. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful story. So it's an affirmation. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. And it, it's true. And it, it just made such a difference. Let me give you some, a couple of other examples. So uh, Lisa is a marketing consultant. And she had an opportunity for a new client, big client. It was in one of the big office buildings downtown Chicago. And so she was in the elevator going up, trying to get to her meeting a few minutes early. So she just settled down and be ready yeah. for it. And as she's getting out of the elevator, she hears some shouts and she's looking around and presses the door open and can't imagine what she's hearing. And all of a sudden she realized it isn't from the elevator or the hallway. It's from another elevator. And someone was yelling that they were stuck in the elevator. Please get help. The mm -hmm. alarm wasn't working. Yeah. And she was like, oh, my gosh. So she had a decision to make. Her values said to her that she should be helping this person in need. And yet the business person side of her said, I've got to get to this meeting. I don't want to be late. I want to be together. I don't want to be frazzled. Well, her values won out. She got help for the person uh, and let the business, the, the building owners know. And then she went off to her meeting. Well, wouldn't you know what? She gets the receptionist and said, you know, I'm sorry. Your host isn't here yet. They're looking forward to meeting you and they'll be here shortly. Let me take you into the conference room. You know where this is going, don't you, John? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Who is she supposed to meet? The person stuck in the elevator. Ah. Uh. Who got the contract? The minute the person came in <laughs> and she said, I'm so sorry, Lisa. I don't mean to be late. But the craziest thing happened. I was stuck in an elevator. And she said, that was you? And she said, <laughs> you got me help? 
contract was signed before she left the office. Oh, wasn't that a great story? So, yeah. so see, kindness does pay, you know. Does. But you know, Howard, it, it raises a, 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 a key point, and I know that you emphasize this, and it's in the book. We don't we don't act kindly to others for something in return, do we? So, yeah, no, um, you know, John. You know, sort of like pay it forward, right? You just have to pay it forward and we're going to get something back. Well, here's the thing. We don't do it for that, but we get that anyway. There's something that I have termed, I've also got a chapter on the neuroscience of make someone's day. Why does it work? Yeah. And part of it is that when something happens to you uh, that's truly impactful, done at the right time in the right way, it like lights up the area of your brain that that seeks joy, right? It's the same same part of the brain that we seek for, for happiness and joy and everything else. In return, the mirror neurons on the person who did it get lit up as well. And so because of that mirror neurons reflecting, you get what I've called the boomerang effect. Yeah. Isn't and, that and yeah, and it, so it's, you're not necessarily doing it for that, but you are getting that reward back. You know what? And that gives us something that um, it's a great and, and I like that idea because it's two people who may or may not know one another, but they're two distinct bodies. Yet the their physiology is reacting to the, an action. And I mean, it's in some ways it shows you we're deeper creatures than we realize but maybe not. Maybe we're still just primates. <laughs> so, but, it's, but it's a powerful thought. And it, it, what it means is that this sense of kindness, this act of compassion, um, we're wired for this, are we not, Howard? So, um, well, that's a, that's a great question, John. We can be wired for this if we choose to do that. Because uh, okay. we could wire ourselves either for positive or negative. Okay. And, and believe me, it, it's easier to wire yourself for negative. To, yeah. to be able to complain, um, kvetch, you know, just, you know, woe is me, right? All this are you happened. talking to Howard? Are you talking to me? You're not talking to me, are you? So not, <laughs> not at all. Not you, John. Oh, my yeah. God. You're the you're the bastion <laughs> of, of lessons, I'll tell oh, you. No, I, I have my faults, my friend. So, okay. Uh, all right. Well, well. <laughs> Fortunately, I haven't seen that side of you yet. I think that may come out in the golf course. From what well, I'm I, 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 anyway, yeah. I, 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 so you can wire your brain, and however you wire your brain, uh, it, it's going to uh, look for more circumstances. So if you mm -hmm. wire it negatively, it's going to look negatively. But if you wire it positively, that's what it's going to look for and feed for. So the more you start thinking about this and doing it, the more you can – Wire your brain for positivity. And guess what? You're going to feel better by doing that. That's great. And so, uh, but you touched on something and you have a whole chapter in here. And and I can see somebody going, picking up this book and reading it. I go, yeah, I'd like to do this, but how do I make the first step? And you address this with the sense of introversion. So how do you, how can you quote, get out of your skin to be kind to someone else, make their day. What are your suggestions, Howard? So you know, it could be really simple. And so I so the chapters go, thank you, John. The chapters go from really uh, what are the simplest things? And the simplest thing you could do is to smile at someone. And I know that sounds crazy, right? What do you mean a smile is gonna make their day? But remember that it's situation dependent. So a smile when someone is lost in thought, upset, um, can absolutely turn them around and make their day. And that's as simple as it could be. A greeting can do that. Just saying hello, having a short conversation. And again, I'm saying about that physically, but you can do that on the, on the computer as well. By commenting, by like using the like button on Facebook, which was designed just to do that, or even better to comment on something, because people really uh, appreciate those comments and that interaction. So, so that's an easy way to do it. There are also like different groups you can you can donate to online 
that make a difference. And I, I highlight some of those that are really easy to help if you want to find out what are some ways I can contribute even more online to making someone's day. No, and that, that's a powerful thing. You have a story about uh, uh, Memorial Day, do you not? So I um, do, yeah, yeah. This was great. So this was not this past Memorial Day, but the one before when the pandemic was really at, at its height. And, and there was a retired uh, Army officer, um, Jerry Vill Vill Harry Villanueva, who said, I want to do something to remember people on Memorial Day. And so he, along with, um, with a reporter from CBS News, whose name escapes me, but, but does all these beautiful stories, put, uh, Steve Hartman, put together this movement called Taps Across America. And they've done it now two years in a row, where they have said, whatever instrument you play at 3 p.m. local time, just go outside your balcony, open your door uh, on your driveway, on the sidewalk, wherever you want to go. And at 3 p.m., let's all sound taps. That's great. Well, I know that resonates with you because I know something that some in the audience may not know, but you are a horn player. The biggest of all the horn players, you are a tuba player. And I, I remember you. Indeed. Well, during the lockdown, Howard, you did something similar um, in some ways. Were you not? You were playing either solo or distance. Or tell us that story. So. Oh, oh, thank you, John. So, yeah. so my mom is in uh, uh, assisted living in a uh, home, and and she loves she loves musicals and such. And so, what I realized is, I can't see her um, physically. But I can see her through technology because she had a caregiver with her who had a little iPod. And yeah. iPad. And so what I did is every day I would play a few songs from some musicals for her on my tuba so that she'd have something to look forward to every day. Right. Well, you know, music, as you know very, very well, because you've been playing a long time and you were once part of the, a marching band, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? So. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. So but there's a there's a collective that comes from playing music together. And um, there's a there's a link, I think, in there between music, the emotional reaction we have and the way we connect with one another. So um, and there, there's a kindness. We feel good when we hear music. Do you not? So absolutely. And if it's music that that uh, especially music speaks to our soul, it really does. Whatever type of music you like. Um, when you hit that music, you just feel really uplifted. And so music can do that. You know, and it, it helps people of all ages. So I tell a story about a former opera diva, Nancy Gustafson, who teaches vocal music at Northwestern. And Nancy's mother uh, had Alzheimer's in the worst of ways. Mm. And Nancy started to sing some songs with her and play piano. And all of a sudden, she got a reaction. And the first reaction is, you don't play piano very well. And she's like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And, then, and then she said something about, and, then, and so she, she's just playing Christmas carols. Yeah. And she said, you know, we could start the Gustafson family, family uh, choir, right? And mom said, I don't think we're ready for, for that yet. Yeah. And all of a sudden she realized how music, even in the worst of Alzheimer's patients, can really capture that part of the brain that remembers that. And okay. so she started a movement um, of, of, of that, that is in, I don't know, I think about 35 states right now uh, to help people in, uh, with memory, uh, memory problems. Right through music called uh, music from the heart. No, it, it does come back. And those who have uh, played as a, an, an adult, or excuse me, as a children and, and learned it and played it, uh, when their memories for many other things uh, slip away, somehow there's a retention of music and it brings them right back into the present. And it's a, a powerful thing to see. And um, it's so emotionally. And, and people who do this, the society um, that uh, Nancy had started and uh, proliferated um that's 
a grand example of making someone's day. So <clears throat> you have this, you know, I, I like how the, the simplicity of your book, the accessibility of, hey, just smile, okay? But on the other hand, take see where it goes and it's a, a, a you can may create a movement who knows but i think that's that the, what i like about this is your book is uh make someone's day get always always hard for me to line up here uh is um it's accessibility and it's affirmation of the human spirit and you know howard you know so well that we are if you just listen watch the news you could especially these days you could get really depressed and don't we overlook the good in our community? So yes, yes, so true. And, and it's the community. You know, there's stories in here about communities, for example, that during the you know, I've got a story about uh, make someone stay in a crisis. And, and tell us that. Tell us that. Yeah. yeah. So so there's there's so many things that happen. Um, but there's one one town that used to have like a. a, a like a food court sort of thing and uh, celebration in a park with music and such, and they couldn't do it and, and the, with the pandemic. And instead, they decided to do something and just ask people for donations of either money or food, food, and people dropped it off in the park. And they got more donations than they have ever received before. Yeah. People want to help. People want to make a difference in people's lives. And so make someone stay isn't just a concept. It's how we all want to live our lives. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that people, this is not a, a should do, must do, although we can argue that. It's actually people want to do this. It's, and what your book does is just opens the door and makes it accessible and that's such a richness to it and so um so uh is there any favorites we're coming close to the end here is there a favorite story or a takeaway you want to leave us with on this um howard so you know you know as, as i say the book is filled of stories stories about bosses stories about leaders story about everyday people um so i'll, I'll leave with with a couple of things First of all, I'm going to leave with, with a story about Maureen, who when she goes out for breakfast, always orders pancakes on the side with syrup to go. Why does she do that? Because once she brought some pancakes, because, um, you know, on a to-go box after going out for breakfast, and gave it to a homeless person, and the homeless person said, do you have any Howard, you, uh, Sorry, you, we just lost your signal. Like that. That. And so, Howard. so she, the homeless person explained and said, you know, pancakes, after they've been, been sat, sat a while, can get rather dry. So it's not that I need the sweetness. I want, want the moist again. And so now Maureen always orders pancakes to go with a side of syrup to bring to someone who doesn't have something to eat. Isn't That's a sweet story. story. Yeah. We had a little audio break up there, but we got the gist of the story, so that that's good. So, um, Great. I'd love to I'd love to uh, share with them something from another book that you may be familiar with, Grace Notes: Leading in an Upside Down World. <laughs> wow! Isn't this one, Ron Baldoni. Yeah. So, uh, you so, so you start with a poem because of COVID. We have strength, we have resilience, we have opportunities, we have one another. In many ways, we've pared our lives down to what's essential. Our loved ones, our families, our friends, and our colleagues because of COVID. And while there is much of to mourn and much to fear in our current world, and sadly that's still, still around, there are also new learnings, new opportunities because of COVID. So whether it's because of COVID that you decide you want to start making someone's day, or if it's because you want to be that memorable leader and work in life, or because you just feel that there's a way that you can make a difference for others, whatever reason, it's good uh, to make someone's day. And you can read the first chapter for free on my website, howardhprager.com. You can and also we will put that in the notes. So, so. Thank you. So, Great. 
Howard, you know, I ask everybody, as you know, uh, a story about grace, but our whole conversation has been about grace. Unless you want to had a, a, a note on grace in personal transformation or something you observed. Your entire book, I would say, is an act of grace. Do you want to comment on that? So. Yeah, I think I think there's so many, so many great stories here and so many examples of how people can can learn to do it and make a difference. So let me end with a, a quick, let me do a quick story here. Um, so, so and it can happen at any age. So again, I'll, I'll go back to the pandemic where so many stories came from. And someone said, said, I wanna make a difference. I'm home from college, I'm bored, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna help any senior that can't get out or needs their medicines picked up, I will go do it. And Mike Arundel started a movement that has also grown across the country of college kids who go out and help others. They're not asking for anything, uh, but, but, but just wanna make a difference in the world. We can what? all do that. We can do that at work. We can do that at home. We can do that in the community. And I say, why not make someone stay? Well, I, yes, put an imperative in there. Why not make someone stay? Yeah. Uh, Howard, it's been such a treat to have you on the show today. Uh, and I urge everyone to grab a copy of this. You will make Howard's day, but more importantly, you'll make a positive difference in the lives of those you know and then the ones you associate with and those you love. So, Howard, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you for spending time with us and me today. So, Thank you, John. I appreciate it. And let me just leave your listeners with one last request. Please. Thank someone. Thank someone who has helped make your life. When you're done listening to this, go, whether you call, write a note, take them to lunch, whatever it is, they will appreciate it because there's a chapter in here too on thanking the people who have made our lives. Um, John, you've made my life and so many of your viewers' lives so much better uh, through your writing, through your work, and through through this webcast. And I'm so glad to be a part of it. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. Um, with that, we're going to close it out. So thank you. Oh.